Good morning, everyone, and Hazak Baruch. Thank you for joining us on this beautiful Monday morning as we are studying together a new parasha, Parashat Ekev. And my friends, of course, like all the parashiot, especially in the book of Devarim, Parashat Ekev is packed. A lot going on. So let's jump right in. Vehaya Ekev Tishme'un. And it will be Ekev when you listen. So what does that mean? Okay, right off the bat, we're already stuck. Vehaya ekev tishmeun. What does that mean exactly? And it will be so simply, the Pasuk is telling us, and if you obey these rules and observe them carefully, Veshamar Adonai Loecha Lecha Tabarit Veta Hesed Asher Nishba Lavotecha. Okay, so Vehaya ekev means, and it will be if you obey and if you observe. Rashi tells us, let's open up Rashi. What does Rashi have to say? Rashi says, Im hamizvot kalot she'adam dash ba'akavav tishma'un. Rashi says, Vehaya, is not saying that if you listen to any mitzvah. The pasuk is being specific. It will be that if you listen to the mitzvot that are ekev. What does ekev mean? Which part of the body is the ekev? Anyone know? We actually have one of the Avot named after the Ekev. Which one of the Avot? Yaakov. Why was he called Yaakov? Yaakov from the word Ekev. He was holding on to the Akev Esav, the Pasuk says. So says Rashi Vahaya, and it will be Ekev Tishmeun. If you listen to the Ekev, what does that mean if we listen to the heel? Meaning if we follow the mitzvot that most people trample on with the heel. There are many mitzvot, by the way, that we value. And we understand are important. Yom Kippur, that's an important day. Mitzvah, we don't mess with that. Pork, we don't mess with pork. Right? Uh, driving on Shabbat. Right? Everyone has in their mind, there are mitzvot that are big mitzvot. Important mitzvot. These are mitzvot that are untouchable. We don't mess with that. Tisha B'Av, we, we keep, we fast, right? Beautiful. Then we have mitzvot that we kind of call them ankle or heel rather mitzvot they're mitzvot that we trample on with our heel they're low mitzvot they're not important mitzvot you know we have unfortunately today we like rating things right we rate amazon purchases we like to rate different hotels or flight experiences they're emailing you the whole time non-stop you went on one flight with united and they're non-stop emailing you rate our flight rate our experience okay i'll rate it leave me alone right so we're rating today we like rating things I remember when I was a kid, we had rate my teacher. The problem is when you start rating mitzvot, and some mitzvot we rate that are the very low, important mitzvot, chas v'shalom. But that's sometimes what we feel like. This is not such an important mitzvah. Right? Again, we all have those types of mitzvot that we view as less important. Says the pasuk, vehaya ekev tishmeun. It is so, so super important that we observe especially those mitzvot that we step on, that we belittle throughout our lives. You know, the Pasuk says, our rabbis tell us, I'd like to share with you a very powerful piece of ear from Rav Aaron Cutler. Says Rav Aaron Cutler, we know that in life, in life, we like to live to the max. We like to live big. We always taught to be, become legendary, right? Become great. Dream big. Don't settle for mediocrity. In life, make sure you become very, very important. Make your mark on the world and make, be someone that everyone knows and you have to be, be big. Matter of fact, our rabbis tell us that we should always say the following sentence. We should always have high expectations for ourselves. We shouldn't, we shouldn't want to be just small in life or average in life. In life, we should, we should dream big to be, to have she'ifot, um, uh, okay? We should, have, uh, uh, we should have visions that we're going to be making an impact. Beautiful. Cesar of Cutler, though, there's a very big uh, downside to that. You know, you keep talking to yourself in your head, I'm going to be great. I'm going to leave my mark on the world. I'm going to be like Ovaja Yosef. I'm going to be like 
these gdolim, I'm going to be amazing, I'm going to be like the biggest philanthropist, I'm going to be big, 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 big. When you think big, 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 then you start forgetting about the small, 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 small. And when a person's always thinking about becoming epic and legendary, so we end up ignoring the small things. Says Rav Kadar, Im Zot, as we're trying to become like our forefathers, and we want to become like Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, Bal Yasiyah Da'ato, be very careful not to ignore the dvarim, the things that nogaim the haye yom yom, that have to deal with the day-to-day -day life. You know, if we're waiting always for that big story that's going to put us in the newspaper or on the daily dose, or we're going to make the Rabbi Yoel Gold, uh, maybe next year to Sha'a Be'av story, if we're waiting to become, God, test me, give me a big test, so that I could go and become very big. But we have to realize that life is not made up of big moments. It's not life. Life is actually filled with small moments. Avraham Avinu, when the three Arabs come to his house, that wasn't a big moment. That was a small moment. It was a hot day, and there was three people that needed just a drink. Avraham gave him a drink. In the moment, it was small. We look back and it's we realize it was big and that's what made him big. But that was that was a small average moment. What makes Abraham Baal Chesed and great is not Akedat Yitzchak ready to sacrifice his 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 son. You know that's not what why Abraham is Abraham Avinu. Abraham Avinu is because of the the small tests of his life. The pasuk says in Tehillim chapter forty nine. The pasuk says. Lama ira bimera. Why in the time of trouble should I fear? Avon akeva yesubeni. The encompassing evil of those, all those who would supplant me. My friends, the Gemara has something very powerful to say on these words. Avon akeva yesubeni. The sins, right? The avon of those, uh, of those who are surrounding me. The Gemara says actually, very powerful. Avon Akevai. You know what's going to surround a person at the end of their life? You know what a person's going to regret most at the end of their life? You know what's going to come back to haunt a person at the end of their life when they're standing at trial in Shamayim? The Avon Akevai. The sins, the small sins. The small sins, the Avon Akevai, the Avon of the Ekev. The Avonot that we stepped on with our heel, that we looked at as small. Small avira. We have to remember, Rabotai, nobody stubs their toe on a mountain. It's the small things that bring man down. It's the small averot that take us down. And at the end of our lives, avon akevai yesuveni. We have to be very, very careful from specifically the small things in our life. In our lives. Hazakana nishkefit le'adam. The sakana is going to come at the end of life or even at the end of every year, when we're tried on Rosh Hashanah, is specifically from the avon, from the sins of the small things. It's the small averot that are actually going to come back to haunt us. You know, the idea of being surrounded by small averot, the rabbi gives over here a very beautiful mashal. He says, if you're surrounded by one strong guy, you could defeat one strong guy. But if you're surrounded by a bunch of weak guys, but if there's many of them, even if they're weak, if they're surrounding you, unless you're Jackie Chan, right? Okay, fine. <laughs> right? You're not going to defeat them. You know what I mean? So most, most Averot, if they're, even if they're small, but if they're surrounding us, those are the mitzvot that we have to be careful from the most. So as an example, as an example, let's take the idea of Derech Eretz. What does Derech Eretz mean? Derech Eretz means to be respectful. Now, to talk nice, you know, someone asks you for something, to be courteous, to be neighborly, to be just a good person, right? Derech Eretz. Most people, not a huge mitzvah, not a huge mitzvah, right? It's not like stealing. But you know what? Our rabbis tell us, Derech Eretz kadma la Torah. 
Derech Eretz actually comes before Torah. And what that means, says Rav Kala, Dafka hen melamdot al mahuto shel adam. If you want to know about a person's character, if you want to know about somebody, whether it's for business, or you want to know if you should um, uh, marry somebody, don't look at the big things that they do. Don't find out about the organization that they're in charge of. It's very nice, but that's a big thing. You don't really know a man's character from the large events of their lives. If you want to know about somebody's life, look at the derech edits. Look at the small things, because the small things, those are the specific things of a person's life that can actually tell you, that are telling about who they are. Our rabbis tell us, the Pasuk says in Tehillim, Hashem Tzadik Ivhan, God tests the righteous. This is a Pasuk in chapter 11 of Tehillim. And the Midrash says that when God tests the righteous people, Bahan le Moshe, David, when he tested Moshe before making Moshe a leader of the Jewish people, how did God test Moses? What was the test? Anyone know? You know, before you, um, before you can make it to the army, if you apply, you have to go through extensive testing and drills. They want to see. And the, the final test is usually huge, big, hard test. Walking for hours throughout the, without sleeping all night and climbing and doing and underwater. Crazy tests. To be able to draw, to become one of the seals, right? Big tests. What was the big test that Hashem tested Moshe with before coming, before becoming a leader, the greatest leader, having the opportunity to speak to God mouth to mouth, face to face? What was the big test that God gave Moshe? Gemara says it wasn't a big test. God tested him with a very small test. He tested him with sheep. One of the sheep ran away, and God was looking to see how does Moshe treat. A sheep, an animal. Animal? What are you talking about how you treat an animal? We're talking about people here. You should test them with a person. Test them with a king. See if he can take care of a king. Says the Midrash, no, of course not. That's how you test someone. A king we'll all take care of. But I want to know about your real character. The real essence of a person you could only know from the small things in their life. How do they treat a little animal? If you see a little animal on the street, are you just indifferent to its feelings you just kill it people that torture little bugs right it's not a good midah you have to know that that's a very bad trait even it's an animal Hashem tested the tzaddik with the sheep Hashem tested David HaMelech with the sheep and and again says Rav Kala Yeshlet Moa how could it be what's the connection between how you shepherd and how you're dealing with the whole Jewish nation it's not only a difference of quality and quantity, but it's a completely different, seems to be a completely different uh, job description, shepherding and uh, people, people watching. Al Korhenu, we are forced to say, says of color, Sheyesh no tzad shaveh ben hashnaim. That actually is a common denominator. Mi et edro haritzut v'ashlemut. Somebody who watches sheep with the utmost care, precision, karov levadai, you could for sure, rest assured, know, shegam malchuto, that's also his kingdom, will be run with precision and with accuracy. Misheeno choshesh latzon, somebody who says, ah, it's one sheep, no big deal, we lost the sheep, it's fine, we have a thousand more. If that's how you talk about sheep, make no mistake, that's how you will talk one day about people. En lismoch alav, don't rely on someone who is, who is clumsy and who is not careful and who is uh, inconsiderate to the small areas of his life. If that's how you are here, it's not just here that you're like that. I can guarantee you that's not because it's a small thing that you disregard it. You're disregarding it because that's who you are. This is a very powerful line. And I'm going to read you what he says. I'm not saying this. Pay attention. You would think, that this was written by someone who was maybe secular. This is from one of the greatest rabbis that ever lived. Somebody who is lax in their mundane, physical areas of their life. Know 
that they are also going to be lax in their spiritual obligations. Because if you're lazy, you're lazy. If you ask someone to come clean up and they're doing it, if you ask someone to come do something and they're doing it in a lazy way, it's not because it's physical. It's because they lack the uh, they, they lack any credence for gashmiyut, for physicality, that they're doing it like that. It's not, it's not why. They're doing it like that because that's who they are as a person. They are lazy as in, in their core. And if they're lazy with physical things, you need to know that when it comes to spiritual things, they're going to be lazy as well. There's a, Rabbi Diamond said a very interesting story many years ago. There was a guy going to the airport and he was, dry, he was dropping off his fiance because uh, she was from, let's say, LA. I don't know where she was from. She was from a different state. And uh, they were dating. And then they got engaged. And then he was taking her back to the airport. And they were sitting in the, in the back seat the whole time together. And he's going to drop her off at the airport. And she's going to go prepare for the wedding. And on the way to the airport, right before he's going to be leaving his fiance for, you know, for you know, a few months till the wedding, the whole time this boy is sitting there opening the Gemara, Studying in the car. Studying Gemara in the car. Someone sees it and says, Wow, it's very impressive learning Gemara. Rabbi Diamond said, That's not a good thing. He's not doing that because he values Torah. He's doing that because he belittles people. And make no mistake, even if it wasn't a Gemara open, if he was a secular fellow and it wasn't a Gemara, if he was dropping off his fiance at the airport, he would be reading the New York Times instead. He's not like that because it's because he's oh studying Torah, 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 Torah. No, no, no. That's not why he's reading the, the, the Gemara. He's studying the Gemara. It's sourced in a very flawed midah. It's a very bad trait what he's doing. It's a very nice thing to learn Torah. But studying Torah at that moment, not understanding that your fiance is in the car, she wants to spend the last few moments that you have together before she goes off preparing for the wedding. You're not going to see her for another few months. Failing to understand that comes from a very bad trait. That's not coming from a, a good place. If someone's, as an example, lazy on the basketball court, right? You see a guy on the basketball court, he's lazy. You could say, well, he doesn't care for, uh, he doesn't care for physical things. Rav Kala is saying it's not true. You need to know if you're lazy when you're playing basketball, that's a bad midah. And if it wasn't basketball, instead if it was a Gemara class, that same guy who's sitting in the basketball court, not trying, not really pushing himself, then you know if there's a Torah class going on, that guy would probably not be pushing himself either. Now again, there's always exceptions. Maybe the guy is just there. He's the... But in general, to not put your heart and soul into what you're doing is a bad thing. And if, if you're not doing it here, Probably you're not doing it here either. That's the point that Rav Kala is trying to make. I remember my brother, Rabbi Yaakov Mizrahi, a very big rabbi. He went to study after high school. He went to yeshiva. And he went to study in the yeshiva that I went to study in afterwards. He went to a place called Migdash Melech. Okay, amazing yeshiva. Changed my life, changed his life. He went to study at Migdash Melech. And at the time, it was in a city called Bayit Vagan. In a neighborhood called Bayit Vagan in Jerusalem. Not sure if you're familiar with it. And uh, my mother, she went to visit my brother in yeshiva. She was in Israel. And she went with Rav Avraham Yosef. Now for those of you that don't know who Rav Avraham Yosef is, Rav Avraham Yosef is the chief rabbi of the city of Hulon. He is the son of Rav, the late Rav Ovadia Yosef. Allah shalom. And Hacham Avraham Yosef, chief rabbi, my, my mom is very close to his wife, Rabbanit Sarah Yosef. So... They were traveling and uh, she said to the rabbi, can you, can you take me to see my son? So they went together to Mikdash Melech and they went up to my brother's room. They were going to surprise him. So they went to my brother's room and the room, my brother wasn't there. But Rabbi Abraham Yosef, when he saw the room, he said to my mom, smiling, he said, I know your son is learning well. We could go home now. She said, what do you mean he's learning well? How do you know? You didn't see him yet. He said, no, but I know. She said, how do you know? He said, when we went to his room, I saw that he had his bed made perfectly. 
I saw his slippers lined up right in front of the bed on the small little rug. I saw that he had his, his clothes were neatly hanged, organized. In the dormitory, I saw that he had seder. It was neat, it was organized, it was in order. I know that if he's organized here in his closet, on his bed, if he's organized here, then I know he's organized in the learning as well. I'm confident. I don't have to see him. You could go see your son. I know he's learning well. This is chief rabbi talking like this. This is the point that Rav Cutler is trying to make. That in life, we have to realize that if we're unorganized here with a small thing, it's not just a small thing. It's going to penetrate the rest of our day, the rest of our lives. If you want to know about somebody for a shiduch, don't ask the big people. Don't ask their rabbi. That's very foolish. Asking the rabbi, what does the rabbi know? The rabbi knows only the good things about them. You call, call me, ask me about one of my congregants, what do I know? I know the guy comes to shul, he smiles, he makes donations, he eats with a bracha, he wears a kippah, what do I know? <laughs> That's a very bad description of the guy. I'm seeing the guy for two hours a week, two hours maybe, maybe if he comes in the middle of the week, I know him for a half hour a day, but I'm seeing in his finest, I'm seeing it in his, him in his best behavior, what does the rabbi know? We call a rabbi for a shiduch. Don't call a rabbi. You want to call someone? Call their neighbor. Ask the neighbor. Ask the, the uh, they work in a school. Ask maybe the cleaning staff. Ask their housekeeper. Ask the small person. This is how you really get to know. By the way, it's not me saying. Take a look at the Mishnah and Pirkei Avot. What is the right way to go in life? Now you can imagine, this is a huge statement. What is the right way to go in life? If you can narrow it down to one sentence. And one of the rabbis, what does he say? Rabbi Yossi Omer, Shachin Tov. A good neighbor. Good neighbor? Good neighbor is okay, it's nice. <laughs> But what does that have to do with the person? You're talking about one trait that you should go in. I would say give charity. I would say you should be helping, you know, creating cures, cancer. Good neighbor? That's what it comes down to, being a good neighbor? The answer is 100%. Because if you're good to the small people, if you're a good neighbor, then it'll penetrate, it'll ripple effect. And you'll be good in, for sure, the bigger things. It's not that if you're good in the big things, we know that you're good in the small things. No, 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 no. It's the exact opposite. It starts with the small. Life is made up of small moments. And if we are able to be strong and consistent and have proper conduct in the small moments, then that's where we actually end up training ourselves for the bigger moments. You know, there's a, uh, a tragic time of the year called the Omer. The Omer is when we mourn for 33 days Rabbi Akiva's students. They all died in the period between Pesach and Lagba Omer. It's a mourning period and many people don't shave, no music, etc. We don't buy sometimes things, right? Different laws of mourning. And we're mourning for the 24,000 students of Rabbi Akiva who died in that period. Now, Rabbi Akiva, that his students should die you have to know why. He was a big rabbi. Why did they die? Our rabbis tell us something frightening. You know why they died? Because they weren't respectful one to another. Now, we read this and we're scratching our heads. How could it be? They weren't respectful one to another? Rabbi Akiva's students, the biggest, the biggest uh, rabbi ever, maybe? And not only that, what was his mantra? What was Rabbi Akiva's slogan? That's so what he preached all day long. He said, you got to be good to your friend. got to love your friend like yourself. Then to think that his students should be mean to each other? How could it be? You know how it could be? It says Rabbi Bernstein something beautiful. The next line. What's the next line? Zeklal gadol bator. Okay, fine. Zeklal gadol batora. 
What does it mean, Ze Klal Gadol Batorah? This is a very important rule. You know what the problem with the Rabbi Akiva students was? That they only used it in a very important situation. It was such a big rule. They waited for the big moment. Where is it? When's it going to come? Who's going to be that guy who's going to be dying that needs my help? I'm ready to go. Who's going to be that person, the goy that's going to be looking at me and I'm going to make that Kiddush Hashem ready to go? But you know what? Life is not made up of cloud gadols. Life's not made up of huge, epic moments. Usually there's not a camera watching you as you are talking to your neighbor or as a non-Jew says something. But the, the students waited for the gadol moment. And they, and they ended up never coming. They ended up never being respectful one to another. We have to realize life is made up of small moments. How do you speak to the waitress? How do you talk to the housekeeper? How do you speak to the guy who's working for you where there's no cameras and he'll never make it to the, uh, to the news? How do you talk to that guy? Because if you're disrespectful there, it won't stop there. It will penetrate even the bigger areas. Hashem doesn't test the tzaddik with how he treated the president and how he treated the gadol ador. Hashem tested the tzaddik with the, with the animal. How are we treating the animals? How are we treating the zero? You know, sometimes you speak to Jews, unfortunately, and their, their mentality towards the goyim is not so proper. They say, ah, he's a goy. He's disgusting. Who cares about goyim? That's not a good midah. It's a very, actually a very bad midah. Because that shows flawed character. That's not coming from a good place to just belittle someone because he's not a Jew. It's not coming from a good place. That's not coming because you're so religious. That's not coming because you're so holy. You don't belittle goyim because you're such a tzaddik. If you're belittling goyim, it's coming from a, from a bad place in your character. It's coming from bad midot. It's coming because you don't value enough people. And if you're talking like that about a goy, it's going to come out one day. If a person doesn't work on themselves, it'll come out a, 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 with, with, with even Jews. So if you want to know about somebody, see how they respond to small moments. So you want to know if someone's the right guy for the job? Look at these. How does he how does he do small things, insignificant things? That's how you know about a person's character. Of course, when you're there on the camera, on stage, who isn't excited? Who isn't doing? Who isn't smiling? That's not how you really know. You really know about someone from the from the small areas of life. Our rabbis tell us, hi man. You want to be a chasid? You want to be a chasid? Then watch over the areas of damages. You want to be a chasid? Chasid, by the way, is the highest level possible. A chasid is somebody who is all the way up here, who's higher than a tzaddik. He's keeping all the extras. You want to, you want to become a chasid? Start with nezikin. Start with the small things. Start with the areas of damaging. You know, my, my father-in-law, tell you a nice story. The other day we bought a, a nice little, I don't know what you call it, a little um, fire pit. One of these port portable fire pits. We bought a small fire pit with logs. Um, and I came home from giving a class and I saw him sitting outside in the backyard. It was the first day that it wasn't humid. It was finally not humid, beautiful day. So. Sitting at night, my brother-in-law, very mu musical, very talented. He's playing with the guitar, comes and sing. Just my, our family, my kids were there. I don't know, eating marshmallows. Comes it, a little fire pit, sitting in the couch around in the backyard. It was beautiful. I get there, I sit down, and all of a sudden, the neighbor, she pops her head up. And she says uh, to my father-in-law, she says, um, you know, I know it's, you know, Nice outside tonight, but the smoke, the smoke from your fire pit is coming into our backyard and it's bothering, it's bothering us from being able to keep our windows open in the house. 
That's it. Bothering us. Do you mind turning off your fire? Now the truth is, the truth is, there's no right for her to ask us. We're allowed to have a fire pit. Right? And I got a little bit, when she asked, I was like, I'm not going to say anything. I was like, how do you ask someone that? So chutzpah, no? You're asking someone to stop enjoying their backyard activity. Close your windows. Put on the AC. What do you want? Uh, well, yeah, what do you... Imagine you go to your neighbor. But, of course, my father-in-law, a real mensch. He said 100%. No problem. And, uh, you know, he turned off. He, he took the hose. He put it out. That's a small thing. That's a small thing, right? Wasn't... Wasn't... Uh, Chief Rabbi of Israel was next door, and you're bothering him from, from uh, with you. It's open air. It's a huge backyard. The smoke's not even really getting. Close the window. What well, you got to inconvenience the neighbor and ask them to turn off their uh, their fire pit? Well, let have a fire pit. But it's the small things, small things. And he was he was very very hundred percent. He didn't even he didn't even say. Listen, maybe. Maybe, uh, could you try closing it? He didn't say anything. He said, oh, 100%, no problem. Turned it off. The next day, the neighbor came. She knocked on the front door, and uh, she was so amazed. She was so impressed of how neighborly uh, my father-in-law, my mother-in-law were. You know, she, she gave them a thank you card. Just, you know, small things in life, Rabotai, small things like that. You know, a lot of times, pay attention to how we treat our neighbors. Maybe they, they ask us, you know, can you, maybe if you don't mind, could I borrow your, could we use your uh, tennis court? Could we use some chairs? Could we use this? Could we use that? A lot of times we're like uncomfortable. What do you mean? Leave me alone. It's my spot. It's my thing. It's my this. It's my that. But the truth is, we have to realize, really, really, what's going to surround us, what's going to defeat us, what's going to make us or break us are the small moments. And small moments are not so obvious to detect. They're small. But let us try today. Wait, pay attention. Maybe there's something small that's going to happen. It could be with a spouse. It could be with a friend, family member. Really, those are the moments that are going to make us legendary. The way to test a tzaddik, the way to tell someone's greatness, how big they are, is by seeing how they treat the small people that are around them. I think that's a beautiful message. That is today's class, that is the idea uh, from today's parasha, ekev tishme'un, to be careful from the ekev, from the small things that we trample on, that we ignore, that's really what's going to make us into the great people that we are going to become. Okay, we'll stop over here. Have a wonderful day, everybody. God willing, we'll see you all tomorrow. Bye-bye.